there was no there were no shopping centers in those days um, all the shops were on the main street in Allentown which ran a distance of about three blocks and if you wanted meat you had to go to the butcher shop and if you wanted groceries you had to go to the grocery store and uh, if you wanted uh, uh, butter and eggs you had to go to the um, poultry place and uh, uh, everything had a specialty and uh, although there were several stores that uh, were similar in what they sold uh, the people in the area uh, developed a fierce loyalty for whatever stores they patronized and wouldn't think of going anywhere else. There were no refrigerators in those days, and uh, ice was delivered uh, two or three times a week. I forget now how often it was, and uh, depending upon the amount of ice your refrigerator would take, you either got a uh, 25, 50, or uh, 75, or 100-pound block of ice. And uh, under the ice box, there was a, a pail to uh, get the water from the melting ice, and uh, each kid in turn was uh, given the responsibility to see that that pail was emptied every night. Uh, and you better not forget, because the next morning, if you forgot, there would be a hell of a pile of water on the floor, and uh, you suffered the consequences. Another interesting merchant was a farmer who had some dairy cows, and uh, he provided milk for the Allentown, Knoxville, Mount Oliver section, and uh, uh, he had a wagon with a great big barrel-like contraption on top, uh, usually packed with uh, chipped ice around it, and uh, the wagon was pulled by one horse, and uh, this horse was about the size of these big horses that pulled the uh, Budweiser brewing tucks. Well, uh, the guy would uh, pull up in front of your house and uh, ring his bell sound, some, sounded something like a cow bell and uh, the mother of the house knew that the milkman was there so if she needed any milk she had to get out there and get out in a pretty big hurry because uh, without any word from uh, old man Lang, the farmer, uh, the horse knew how long he was supposed to wait. Uh, uh, and if the lady of the house wasn't there within the prescribed time, the horse would start off all by himself and stop in front of the next house. Another person, the personal service we had was uh, the beer truck, uh, pulled by some pretty big horses and uh, had on it uh, cases and uh, also had on uh, uh, various sizes of barrels from an eighth to a full barrel. And uh, we got... Uh, uh, beer delivered to our house at uh, regular intervals and uh, for the most part uh, there was a beer available uh, on the dinner table every night and uh, there were no restrictions. The kids and the adults shared in a glass or two of beer and no nobody ever drank to excess. Uh, I guess they wouldn't have been allowed if they wanted to. Uh, in those days we all belonged to the same church and uh, mother insisted on everyone going every Sunday. Well, this church was about, uh, it was on the south side, up around 20th Street, and it was about uh, three miles from our house, which was up on top of the hill in, uh, in Allentown. And uh, the only way to get there conveniently was uh, a road which, uh, and, and walk, which ran down over the hill. And uh, it wasn't so bad going down, but it was quite a drag coming up. Uh, on the bottom, though, there was a horse-drawn streetcar that ran uh, from Lower Carson Street up to about 20, 20, 23, 24, 25th Street. I don't know just how far, but uh, we were never allowed the luxury of riding on the horse car. We had a walk. And also, from the, from, uh, the connection between uh, Allentown and the south side was served by an inclined plane. And uh, it was quite a big uh, cabin on the thing. Uh, uh, there were two sets of tracks, and uh, when one, when one uh, incline was at the bottom, uh, the other one was at the top. So they served as a balance to each other when they were running. And uh, they were big enough to uh, accommodate uh, uh, at least uh, two horse-drawn uh, wagons for the merchants that were going from one place to the other. Now, the price of an incline ride was uh, three cents, and uh, I think money was kind of tight in our family, and uh, 
only in the worst weather in the world we were ever able to ride up the incline. So when we went to church, we usually walked uh, down the hill, attended the services, then walked up the hill again to come home. But in real bad weather, maybe our parents would be able to spare the three cents to let us ride up the incline, which was a big treat. Another recollection I have of early Allen Allentown concerns the fire engine house. Uh, the engine uh, uh, was a horse-drawn affair uh, pulled by two very big horses, uh, and the stables were arranged right in front of the engine. And uh, uh, the harness for the horses was suspended from the ceiling. And uh, when the fire bell rang, the horses knew something was up. So uh, uh, they were unloosed from their stalls and uh, immediately back between the shafts of the engine and the fireman pulled some kind of a rope and the harness fell down over the horses and they were hitched up to the engine and on their way to the fire. Pretty good, and we kids never miss seeing that happen. Our house on Excelsior Street was about two lots away from the uh, Allen Public School, uh, which had grades of one to eight. Now, the school had a large bell in the bell tower uh, which was connected uh, by a one-inch bull rope, which ran, which ran down to the first floor. And it was a janitor's job to ring that bell every morning to let us know that classes were about to begin. And it could be hold, heard all over the community. Uh, the morning classes uh, started at 9. Uh, then we had lunch from 12 to 1, and most of the kids went home for lunch and the janitor rang the bell at uh, 12.45 for the classes that started at 1, and uh, boy, you better be there on time. We were then, uh, school was out, I'd say, around 3 to 3.30. In those days, completing an eighth grade education was above average uh, uh, in that district uh, because the kids had to uh, uh, quit school to go to work uh, at an early age to help support the family. And uh, I was the only one in that family uh, uh, that my brothers and sisters and father and mother could afford to send to high school because they just didn't have the money. Uh, however, uh, all of our family uh, completed their, the eighth grade, and uh, this was really outstanding for a family of our size. Mother Keller was really a remarkable woman. Uh, she taught herself to read and write English. Uh, she was a wonderful mother. Uh, she was loved by all of her children. Uh, she was a very hard worker, morning, noon, till night. When she had a child, my father, a hard-headed German, insisted that the day following each birth, she get out of bed and resume her regular household chores, and she did. She did all of the washing, cooking, baking, uh, in a large coal burning stove which was in the kitchen and every Friday uh, she baked at least a dozen in cinnamon loaves. I had to deliver them in a large basket and the round trip was at least five miles. Every fall mother made apple butter uh, out in the yard, yard in a large uh, copper kettle that it was at least a foot across uh, a well, foot and a half maybe across in diameter and about three feet high. It uh, took the family about a week uh, to peel and core the apples. Uh, the kettle uh, was fired by uh, wood and coal, and the kids had to serve the mixture in the log with large handled paddles, uh, and these paddles had holes drilled in, uh, in them that would enable you to mush the, uh, the book up. Uh, the handles were about five feet long and about an inch thick. Uh, when the uh, uh, enough uh, was kept uh, by the family to last through the winter and uh, uh, the surplus was always given to neighbors. Uh, another chore that uh, the whole family participated in uh, occurred uh, every spring and fall, which was called uh, carpet cleaning time. Uh, every carpet was taken out and put on the line, and the kids took turns 
beating all the dirt out of it. Uh, and that usually took all day long, and at the end of the day we were ready to go to Betty Bye, let me tell you. Mother was uh, religious. Uh, she attended church regularly and insisted that the children do so also. She never, uh, however, interfered uh, uh, with the religious beliefs of others. She was physically attractive, compassionate, and inscrutably clean, and she always uh, was available to help anyone who was in need. She was known in the neighborhood, affectionately, as Mother Keller. Father Keller was a hard-headed, stubborn German. He was, uh, nevertheless, a hard-working man. Uh, he was frugal uh, by nature and necessity. Uh, he was thoroughly honest and ethical in all dealings. He was a stern taskmaster, but I cannot recall a single instance where he sat down with a son or daughter to provide parental guidance of some nature. He was just too damn busy keeping his family going. He always took care of his family. He worked all tirelessly, often 12 and 14 hour days, uh, because that was the normal thing in the, in the Jones and Lachlan steel mill at that time at the South Side Works. There was no labor union uh, in the mill at this time, uh, and uh, wages provided only a bare living. Many purchases uh, were made at the company store, which was known as the Mill Store, or the Pittsburgh Mercantile Company. And when for any reason or other uh, uh, there was no work uh, to be had, uh, expenses at the uh, Mill Store ran on uh, because you had to keep your family alive. And then when you got back to work, uh, the, the first thing that was taken out of your pay was enough to pay the company store back. In order to uh, augment his income, uh, Dad for many years also had a paper route in the morning, and he used to get up uh, oh, in the middle of the night uh, to uh, gather the papers from the distributor and deliver them to his customers, and uh, uh, to some degree he was helped in this work by his sons. Dad worked so hard under adverse conditions that he had to retire at a fairly early age due to crippling arthritis. And, as far as I know, there was no pension.